You see, the time for testing live has come earlier than expected because there's a fucking big storm and no one's got any power. It's completely black everywhere. So we're having horrible concoction of wires <coughs> putting us off. So hopefully, that's going to go in a minute. All right, we're down in the inverter room. Safety switch off. Uh, this is seeing some kind of utility. No idea if it's gonna switch over or not. Well, hey, look at that. I had to fiddle with some settings, but we have successfully connected to a generator. We've got about 0.8 amps per face. Let's uh, see if we can stop a heat pump. All right, here we go. Heat pump is uh, starting up, so this is a big inverter thing. It's pretty harsh. And the compressor's going. It's revving up. It's gonna go up to 49 RPM. Seems okay. We're up to speed. Heat pumps using 1800 watts, 1900, about 2k. Let's uh, go out and see what the diesel thinks of that. Just got power back and it's time to shut down. So we've been running under load for a few hours. I did have some pickup with the control panel. This guy still doesn't want to work when it uh, gets warm. But the actual gentle has worked beautifully. And uh, it's barely even getting warm. seems to be reasonably efficient, all things considered. did have to <laughs> uh, get, get some more diesel because this one was obviously not fueled but uh, we do have a 10 a fuel gauge is on which cannot be we have to use and not too bad A quarter of a tank since I started. I really do need to fix the exhaust for these. Terribly loud. But since we've got power back and we're back on the grid, we can finally just uh, add it up for day. Stop that. There we go. So this control panel has some issue where once it gets warm, it'll just randomly go into stop mode. I don't know if it's a button or some dodgy connection to the button or uh, the, the logic circuit hooks up to whatever. Something's funny, it goes into stop mode and it'll start up, stop back up and go back into stop mode as soon as it powers back on. So uh, it's a bit sad, but I fixed up the other panel, so I should have a working replacement. Probably going to swap that in and give us some attention. There we go. What a surprising live test. The most difficult part of everything was getting this bloody thing started. I had to be jumping it with a battery over there just to reverse it 
five meters so my extension cord would reach. But hey, that's not a bad shake. Not bad at all. Ah, and as a real final note to this video, I just finished my proper generator hookup so we can actually see the output performance of this generator. And uh, it's not actually super, I was expecting a bit better, but we are going through a fairly long extension cord and we're powering the heat pump, which is a 15 kilowatt inverter. Uh, so we have a distortion waveform here, we can go to the uh, uh, input waveform. Where do you go? Ah, there we go. So that's the uh, output waveform. It's a bit jagged. It's not a perfect sine wave, but uh, that certainly uh, leaps and bounds beyond what uh, a cheaper genset would do. It also does uh, oscillate quite a bit because that's a slight misfire at some load conditions on the engine. I think it's mostly when different faces are loaded differently. It tends to sort of uh, skip a bit, but it's not terrible. And if we go to the uh, distortion, we have uh, just about 5% distortion on the output. This is at like, yeah, I don't know, 8 to 10 kilowatts of load. And we can see that uh, all of this stuff, this is from my uh, heat pump causing that. And probably some of it is also uh, just noise from the uh, driver capacitors, the rectifier noise. We can actually get to a better performance if we turn on a bit more a resistive load. So keep that in mind, About just about 5% THD. Let's go uh, turn on a big fan. So that's another 10 kilowatt of purely resistive load. And no, we get worse performance actually. There you go. I'm not going to leave that on for too long because I don't know how much load is actually on the whole system. We might uh, trip the uh, overload uh, on the, uh, the electrical box. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. For a free gen, <laughs> you really can't complain. Powering the whole house and more. Okay, so what you eat is a uh, backup generator if it uh, doesn't start in the cold. So it's about negative 10 degrees Celsius right now. It's been chilling out all day. Uh, let's uh, see if she'll go. So everything in here is proper frozen. I finished the exhaust today so we don't have to open the rear door. Okay, so the automatics are alive. Eventually. I'm not sure where I'm going to fit this into any video, but uh, after the uh, power outage situation cleared up, I've uh, decided to. Uh, I, I noticed some issues in the automation system and I've uh, fixed it up and I'm currently doing a bit of an extended run test so you can see this has been running uh, for about two and a half hours now the snow slowly uh, melting away and uh, this is uh, the first time I've actually uh, ran the engine uh, properly warm uh, this thing takes uh, over 20 litres of oil, so it takes a really long time for it to actually uh, get up to temperature. 
Uh, I also fixed a, a sort of reasonable exhaust so we don't have to have the doors open anymore. That works well, although it does uh, like to snow in. I need to fix that better as time goes on. Uh, but uh, the engine really sounds a lot happier uh, once it uh, warms up properly. And if we bring out the thermal imager, we can take a bit of a closer look. Oil change. So, the uh, coolers, about 40 degrees. This one was like 60. and the tutorial is about uh, 75 and it took a real long time to actually get the oil hot enough and if we look at the filters uh, just at 60 degrees and the uh, time to lock there about 70 everything's looking really nice all the vital signs are happy we can take a look at the meters. Temperature and oil pressure are both fine. This camera cannot see my phone. But the alternator is about 40 degrees. And uh, my nice, funny uh, uh, fuel warmer setup works because the fuel lines are actually uh, getting uh, warm. Because if the cold fuel comes in from there, the fuel, the fuel return is there, and that's of course slightly warm. And that also makes it, uh, due to a device installed in the actual car, uh, that's got uh, a heating system where it recirculates the return fuel in the filter. So we actually have slightly preheated fuel. You can see the uh, incoming fuel is like uh, 20 something degrees even though it's you know freezing outside but snow yeah this is real looking like a happy little gen set it does have a slight gallop but I think that must, might just be how old three cylinder diesel with 20,000 hours behave Vitals are good. Ah, heat pump's chilled out. We've been running at about uh, 10 to 15 kilowatts of load uh, for the past couple of hours. Well, no, no, not 15. I peaked at like 13 kilowatts, but uh, my setup isn't really made for more than that. So uh, it absolutely handles uh, uh, my desired load just fine. The AVR has drifted upwards in both slightly though, 235. But that's fine, it's set for 234, so I'm not concerned. There you go. And of course the whole car, if, uh, if we get a war going, it's uh, certainly not invisible. This thing would uh, attract drones like crazy, but hopefully we're not going to get to having to think about that. I do have to uh, actually open one window completely and the other one has to be cracked otherwise it uh, will uh, run really toasty. I noticed the, uh, the, the cooler was up to like uh, 60 degrees when this window was closed and the other window was cracked so it does require some cooling. I'm gonna fix a better cooling setup at some point but uh, this is absolutely serviceable for the time being. I'm super happy. Especially having the exhaust so I can actually run it without any doors open. I have no idea how much... I also want to know how much fuel it uses. Now the fuel gauge of the car does work, but it's uh, not powered right now. And once... This is what it would add when I started. And we're going to see how uh, far down it's dropped after three hours of runtime. Uh, Probably lower than I'd like. I don't think this thing is going to be super efficient. 
uh, but also not horrible, hopefully. There we go. Three hours at about 10 kilowatts of load. No problem. Well, this thing has really been in the warm airstream from the radiator. Oh, well, that's fine. Now, the real question is well, how much fuel have we used? So this car has like a 60 litre fuel tank, I think. So let's uh, turn the ignition on. As in what we've lost. That's not that's not a terrible amount. I expected way more. Okay. What a pleasant surprise.